Welcome to Electron Line. In order to understand a little bit more what internal forces on beams are and how they work, let's go to something that's a little bit more familiar to us, compression and tension. Remember from the bridge structures we learned what compression and tension on a beam is. It is along the lines of the beam, so it's different from what we're going to be seeing in this section, but at least it gives us an idea of how to look at internal forces on a beam. Imagine that we have a beam and the beam is currently under tension, which means forces are pulling on the beam in opposite directions away from the beam. If we then imagine a point inside the beam, what is going on at that particular location? One way to think about that is to separate the beam into two sections. Imagine that they're still connected, but if we're taking a look at the individual sections like this, you can see then on the, on the left side of the right section of the beam, we have a force pulling to the left. In other words, the material on the beam on this side is actually pulling on the material on the beam on that side, and vice versa. This section of the beam is actually pulling on this section of the beam, pulling it in this direction. So in essence, when we look at what's happening inside the beam at a particular location, we can see that on the left side, there's a force pulling to the right, which is equal to this force in direction and magnitude, and equal to this force in magnitude. Then there's a force pulling on this direction, on this section of the beam. Again, this force in magnitude is equal to the force in magnitude there, and it's equal to the force over here, and also the same as this direction. So that's how we tend to look at what happens inside the beam as a result of forces acting on the beam on the outside. When the beam is under compression, notice now we have two forces from opposite directions pushing in this direction. Again, if we want to know what's happening at a particular location on the beam, we can then separate the beam into two sections, but just in imagination. This is like free body diagrams if you want to look at them. And again, notice the result is that this section of the beam will be pushing against that section of the beam in this direction, and this section of the beam will be pushing against this section of the beam in this direction. So those are the internal forces inside the beam when the beam is under compression, and here are the internal forces in the beam when the beam is under tension. So that gives us an idea of how to look at that. It'll make it a little bit easier when we look at the shear forces and bending forces to try and figure out how they're acting inside the beam. And that's how we get started on that.